Hi there, it's Bonnie with So Inspired by Bonnie with another Tuesday's Tip. And today we're going to talk about tips and tricks and techniques with templates and placement. Now this can be placement for your embroidered designs or placement for kind of fussy cutting fabric within an embroidery design if you're doing an applique or something of that nature. So we've got a lot to cover today. I'm going to come over to my computer and make sure that um, it's coming through all right and everything is up and running as it should be. I wanted to thank you all for showing up and coming in and spending a little time with me. I know we're all really busy right now gearing up for the holiday uh, sewing, but let's see if we are active over here. And it looks like we are. Hi, Debbie. Good to see you. I know some others are going to be showing up here very soon, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Again, today's discussion is going to be tips and tricks with templates and placement. So go ahead and if you're showing up, let me know where you're coming, showing up from. Where It's always fun to see where everybody's showing up from. Uh, hi, Anna. Hi, Carol. Monica. Great to see you guys. Okay, so... There's a lot to do and I'm pretty excited about this one. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun for all of us. Again, go ahead and like and share so that you can invite your friends. The more the merrier. Placement. This is discussed so much, especially with newcomers. I know a lot of this is gonna be uh, kind of reminders for those that have been doing it for a while, but I hope to have some little extra tips and tricks that will make it just that much easier. Placement of designs has always been kind of something that intimidates a lot of people and I hope that I can take some of that intimidation away and get you some more ammunition in your arsenal when you go and jump on your projects. So one of the first things I recommend that you purchase after an embroidery machine, the stabilizer and your threads and designs, of course, would be some sort of software software that will allow you to print out templates. Now, I'm not talking about the expensive digitizing software. I'm talking about something more like an editing type software. They're all different price ranges. If you wanna know more about the difference between editing software and digitizing software, I did a blog post about that subject a couple of weeks ago go to my website at soinspiredbybonnie.com and there's some great information there to uh, get you educated about what the difference is between digitizing software and editing software. This can be done in digitizing software. I'm not just saying that it can't. I'm just saying you don't have to spend that kind of money to get a design uh, template printed out. Generally, this is an example of how a template looks when it comes off your printer. It'll have, you know, the vertical line, a horizontal line on it, and generally it'll have an arrow pointing which end is up. If it doesn't have an arrow pointing which end is up, you might need to add that manually. Um, what I'm going to discuss first is how to get a fabric placed into your template so that you can audition your fabrics and get the fabrics exactly where you want them if you're doing an applique design and want to use a specialty kind of fabric. Now years ago, I'm going to back up a little bit, years ago when we were first using templates for embroidery, it was recommended to me to try transparency film. And I got this box of transparency film and it was not cheap. I will tell you that right off the bat. It's great. I loved working with it but I saved it for very special projects <laughs> because this way back then was about a dollar a sheet and that's kind of rich for my blood. But it's very durable if you're doing the same template multiple times. Um, it's really durable and it works great because you can see right through it where it's going onto your project. Obviously, I don't use it very much because I have the same box I started with years and years ago. I refer to my paper templates all the time. Okay, so how do we get this ready to audition fabrics with it? What I did, and um, I 
is I took it, and I hope you can see this, I cut out the center because I decided that I was gonna skip the color changes in the center of my little mitten. I was gonna skip all that detail. So I cut out the detail. I left this little detail that's part of the mitt satin um, outline. And then I left this um, cuff on here. And then I cut real close to the outer edge as well. And what you're going to do is you're going to take your fabrics and um, I just decided I wanted, you know, some specialty fabric for this little mitten and make it, you know, a little snow guy. And I pulled out some different fabrics and here you can see I'm laying it over the fabrics to see exactly where I want it. And I want all three of these little Santas on that mitten. And there it is, easy peasy. I can see exactly what's going to fit within that area on my little mitten. Now in this instance, I cut the inside out very close to the edge and I would, on this one, I would trace on the inside with either a water soluble pen or a Frixion pen. Now I would test the Frixion pen to make sure it's not gonna have issues with your fabric or anything. Um, but I would just trace on the inside of that and then I would cut about a quarter of an inch away from that edge and then I would use this template and I'll show you how I do that later but I would use this template to get it on my project and I'm using this as a template to cut out my fabric so I have the right shape to lay down on my project to have basically a fussy cut kind of um, fabric within the template on my project so that's one deal now I have um, another option here where these are my luggage tags and um, this is I chose the blank luggage tag and this is how the blank luggage tag looks when it's printed off of my computer again it shows me I had it upside down it shows me which end is up and which end is down and if I wanted to audition fabric to go within this now this is an in the hoop project this isn't just a standard uh, applique such as my little Christmas cookie mitten was but say I wanted a luggage tag that was more seasonal you know for the holidays I could come in here now on this one let me back up a bit on this one I cut very close to the outer edge and I know that there's gonna be a pocket here so I know that there's gonna be some detail stitching on the inside of this element and I wanted to leave that because I want to know that my fabric fussy cut section is going to fit within those design elements. So say I wanted to make a holiday tag for whatever, maybe a backpack or whatever, um, I can look at these pumpkins and see which one's going to fit within the elements and which one I might like to use. On this one, I would not trace on the inside of the design, but I would trace around the outer edge of the design because this is gonna go on the back. And then again, I would trim maybe a quarter of an inch away and then I'd have it ready to go in my fabric once the placement line is down. Now, once you put the placement design down, and you have your fabric attached with the, uh, not placement, excuse me, the material tack down stitch. Look at it and make sure it's exactly where you want it and nothing slipped on you or anything because it's a lot easier to take out the tack down stitch than it is the finishing satin stitch. So that's another option. You can make these luggage tags with all kinds of little different holidays. You pull out your fabrics and see which way it might work. You, you might want the, the tag to go up and down as opposed to horizontally with your fabric. But with this cut out like it is and creates a window, you're able to see how that works. And if you pulled out some other fabric and go, oh, I really like this, we're going on a, I don't know, a Caribbean cruise and I want something that's leafy or something and this is really pretty fabric, I really like it. But as you can see, it's lost on here. This, that's why it's really good to audition your fabrics and see what will work. 
Um, maybe the smaller leaves will work, but certainly that big leaf is just going to get lost on that luggage tag. So that's one way to use your, you know, that's the second way to use your templates for uh, fabric placement, kind of fussy cutting your fabrics to get them where you want them in your design. Now the third way I use my paper templates is if I just have a regular design. Now this is an applique again from my Snow Buddy set, but it would work equally well for um, uh, a standard design. Say I wanted to put it on a shirt. I probably wouldn't put it on this particular shirt, but if I wanted to put this on a shirt, I would just kind of rough cut around the edge. I don't have to be super duper close to the edge. You can see that I'm not super duper close to the edge. I sort of rough cut him out. I always put the number of the design on my template because once they get separated from the whole sheet, you no longer know which is what. So I always put the number on the designs, if, especially if I cut out more than one. If it's only one design, it's not a big deal. But um, if I'm cutting out several, then I'll, I'll number them and I just kind of get in that habit. But if I want to put it on a shirt, and I'm just playing around because this is what I'm wearing today, I would try on my shirt and I would put him on me. And I like using transport tape. Uh, it's spelled T-R-A-N-S-P-O-R-E. It's a medical kind of tape and it's nice and sticky. I don't know if you can see it. It's a little bit opaque, but not totally. It has a little bit better sticky power than your standard scotch tape, so that's why I really like it. It tears really clean. If you accidentally stitch over it, you can tear it away. It works great in, in the hoop projects, as well as for taping your templates on. But you find this in the pharmaceutical department in a discount store, say Target, Walmart. I'm sure it's at the grocery stores even. But you're going to put the template on your shirt or your project where you want it. Try on your shirt, tape it in place, you know, look in a mirror, of course. And then you take this to your machine. You walk this on over to your machine, and or not to machine first, to the hoop, of course. You're going to hoop this, and you're going to line up the vertical line and the horizontal line within your hoop. Now, if your design doesn't completely fill up the hoop, you can be off a smidge, either up or down, but you do want to be straight. Now, I know there are some machines out there that are fancy, and, and I've got one of them, that you have a scanner and you can just uh, scan over it and align what's on your screen over what's on your hoop, or you have a snowman sticker that will rotate and align it. Those work great if you have a little bit of wiggle room that the design doesn't fill up the complete hoop. Um, if you get outside of the sewing field, it, you'll, it'll make you re-hoop it so that you're straighter in the hoop if the design fills up your sewing field. But for those of you that don't have the fancier machines, this works equally well. You just take it, again, line up your vertical horizontal with your hoop, take that on over, to your, uh, you know, you've hooped it, of course. You take that on over to your embroidery machine. Don't remove the template yet. Take your needle position and make sure that you move the needle to be directly over the center point of your design. Make sure also that your design is upright facing the same way as your template because sometimes we put things upside down on a project. That's fine. Maybe it's a flower and it looks better upside down. Um, well, not with a stem, of course, but you know what I'm saying. So you might want to do that, but make sure that you rotate and make sure that it matches what you have on your uh, hoop. Once you make sure, and do drop the needle down. Don't start embroidering, but drop the needle down. Make sure it goes right through the center of those crosshairs. Once you have it through the center, you can take the template off and sew, and it'll be exactly where you want it to be. Now, um, I was gonna say something and I already forgot. It'll come back to me later. But that's basically how you get 
a very simple design from point A to point B. One thing I wanted to bring up, I think I remember, when you're doing shirts like this, <laughs> when I was first starting, I was laying the shirt down, and this is why I emphasize you wanna try it on or try it on the person that's gonna be wearing it and put it on that way. Now, there are hooping aids that if you're doing this production-wise, it's very much worth it to invest in a hooping aid. But I'm not discussing that right now. I'm talking more towards the people that are just doing one here or there for one person or gifts and things like that, not mass, produce, mass producing. So on your shirts, generally speaking, where that collar meets is gonna be, if you come straight down from that collar, it's gonna be about center where that design should be. If you were to lay out the shirt and center it over the shoulder seam, like I did, I'm guilty, so don't feel bad if you've done this, I've done it too. If you lay it out on, on your shirt out and then just kind of center it over the shoulder seam, now this shirt has an exaggerated drop shoulder, but some of them have a little bit of a drop shoulder and some of them don't, but even if it doesn't have a drop shoulder, you're gonna to be too far off the body and it's gonna wind up in your armpit. If I were to take this shirt, for example, here's the seam right here, way down my shoulder, and centered it over my shoulder on just the shirt and come straight down, it's, it, the design's gonna wind up in my armpit. <laughs> so that's why I say you wanna try it on, make sure it's where you want it to be. There are some hooping aids out there that will help you and there's also some, any, I think it's called My Embroidery Buddy that is just a little L square kind of ruler that will help you line that up that doesn't cost an arm and a leg. So they do have some aid for hooping shirts that are not super duper expensive. Okay, so that's method number three where we're just taking one little design, putting it on a project, lining up the needle over that crosshair and stitching it out. If the needle, that's what I was gonna, I just remembered what I'd forgotten. If the needle will not center over your center crosshairs, your machine needle will not center, you can't move it, it just kind of keeps beeping at you like I can't go anymore. That means you're out of the sewing field to get it where you want it and you're gonna need to rehoop it and straighten it out a little bit. Okay. Method number three, now we're going on to method number four where we're getting a little bit more advanced here. We're going to do multiple designs. We wanna create a seam maybe on a shirt. So what I would do is again, I print out my templates and I, I printed out a bunch here yesterday and you know I just kind of rough cut around them. I numbered all of them because when I print out a bunch like this, I don't remember which one was which. So uh, once it's separated from the, the detail information from the template, I need to know at least which number this design was. So that's why I number everything because when you're working with a, a design where you're doing several, it can get mixed up pretty darn easily. So Let's I pretend we're gonna do this shirt and we want several elements on here. What I did was I used the transport tape and I just sort of eyeballed it and taped it on. If I were really doing this for real embroidery as a project, I would measure and make sure everything looked good. Sometimes you do have to eyeball things because designs aren't always perfectly balanced when they're centered. So trust your eyesight. If it looks a little off, even though it's measuring correctly, trust your eyes where the weight of the design is more centered. Uh, what I'm thinking in my mind right now is say you were doing a cat and it, you know, the bulk of the body is, you know, right here and then it has this long tail sticking out. Well, it's gonna to wanna to center between the long tail and the body, but the weight of the design is the body of the cat. So that's what you're going to focus on. So sometimes you have to trust your eyes to laying out what looks good over a ruler. Don't be afraid to do that. It's perfectly okay. All right, so I've laid these out. Now what happened with this one is I wanted this design and this design on either side of my center design. 
Again, I've numbered them. Um, and when I do that, I didn't want the same exact, I mean, it's the same exact design, but I needed to mirror image it. So what I did is I went back to my software, I mirror imaged the design, I reprinted it out so that I could put it on both sides of the shirt and have it balanced because one side has a swirl going up and if I did it the same on both sides, identical, then the swirl would be going up on opposite ends and I wanted the swirl going up in a mirror imaged fashion. So lay it out. Another tip that I would like to add is try a few different layouts of, of your design elements. Take a snapshot of those elements with your cell phone as you're going along so that you can remember and go back and compare and see which elements you like the combination best with. Because sometimes as you're designing and creating, um, you forget what you put it in. It's like, oh, I remember, I liked that one better, but what did I do? So if you take a quick snapshot, you can refer back and recreate what you did. If you can't see those design elements on your cell phone, because it's so small, and some of us have mature eyes, and it's harder to see on the small cell phone, go ahead and email yourself the picture. Blow it up on your computer where you can see a bigger viewing of it. So those are a couple of little tricks that I use when I'm designing a shirt or something and I want to try several different layouts to see what might work best. Now if you look at this shirt, remember what I said earlier that when the template comes off the printer, it always, on mine anyway, it has the arrow pointing up so I know which end is up on my design. If you look more closely, and I don't know if you're going to be able to see it, but the arrow is pointing towards the center on this design, it's pointing straight down, this design is upside down, and then this design is pointing that direction. So when you go to hoop these, and you take it to your embroidery machine, make certain that what you're seeing in the hoop is matching what you have on your screen. You wanna make sure that if it's rotated, you've rotated it on your machine, or if it's upside down, you wanna make sure that it's upside down on your machine. So that's why all these marks are very important on your template. It helps cue you as to which direction that embroidery design needs to be so that when it stitches out, it'll be the right direction when you do it. Um, the other thing I did was this, these two are the same design, but this one's the mirror image. So what I did was I put an M on this design so that I knew it's just a little reminder that this one is mirror imaged so that when I put it under the machine to sew it out, I know that I need to mirror image it on my machine as well. So that's method number four using templates with placement. Um, I know I'm kind of going through these sort of quickly, but we'll have replays so that you can replay them anytime you need. Now the last one was a little bit more challenging for me. Um, this is the fifth method. And what it was, was I was creating a tree skirt. Now you can do this on, you know, ready to wear projects, but it's gonna come up where you want the same exact multiple layout to be the same exact all the way around something, whether it be uh, the same corner, exactly placed design elements, I'm thinking of two or three elements on a tablecloth or maybe the ends of a table runner or what have you. There's gonna be a time when you want multiple elements to be exactly the same in different positions on your project. So here's what I did. Now I was creating this from scratch, but you could do this equally well on a finished project. What you're gonna do is you're gonna create a pattern area of the section that you want to be duplicated. In this instance, it was um, a panel on a tree skirt. So if I had a ready to wear, not ready to wear, but a ready-made tree skirt that I was gonna embroider all the way around, I was thinking of this earlier today, what I would do is I would either fold that tree skirt in fourths or eighths, depending upon how big my uh, repeat pattern was gonna be, and then I would kind of use a, a pencil and uh, freezer paper on top of the 
uh, project and I would kind of trace with a pencil around that panel. But anyway, that's if it was already um, a made up tree skirt. This tree skirt, I was working from a pattern so it was easy for me to recreate the bottom section uh, panel uh, for what I needed to place my design elements in. So what I did was I created the pattern. I marked off where the seam allowance was because I knew I needed to stay within the seam allowance. And then I laid my design elements on my pattern the way I wanted them to be. This way I wasn't going to have to recreate the wheel and reline up the, the, uh, the, the templates on each and every panel eight times. So to me this was a real time saver. Just doing this little extra work in the up front saved me so much time in the end. And then once I had those taped onto my freezer paper, I took an eyelet cutter, and I don't know if everybody knows what an eyelet cutter, it has like a little flat edge here. It just, it cuts holes in fabric to, for eyelets, you know, that you lace through, but I use it to, uh, with my templates. And I went to my cutting mat, and I put a mark, I poked a hole through the center, the vertical, top and bottom, left and right horizontal. So I had five holes poked in each of my little templates that I had cut out and placed on my pattern. Then I laid this new template, which had the three elements, onto my project. I took a water-soluble pen and I dabbed little hole, I dabbed through with my pen through the holes and then I lifted it up and I, I did it one at a time. I lifted up one at a time, not just everything all at once because I wouldn't have known which dots were connect to what. But I did it one at a time and I drew my arrows or I drew my lines, horizontal and vertical. I drew an arrow so I knew which end was up and I numbered the template on my project so that I knew which elements I was going to put where. And then I just repeated that process for each of the eight panels. And I would take that to my machine, same thing again. I would align my needle directly over the crosshairs to make sure I had everything right side up. I had my arrow pointing which end was up, so I knew which way to match that up with my screen. I kept the template beside me while I was embroidering and lining things up in the, uh, in the hoop so that I knew which direction that pattern needed to be. It was a visual aid, you might say. <laughs> so um, that was what I came up with for the various methods to use templates to either line up and get your design elements exactly where you want them to be on various projects or to get fabric fussy cut within a template so you got that exactly where you wanted it to be within an embroidery. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this and now we're going to go over here and I'm going to double check and see what kind of questions we have. Um, now it's going to roll through so I won't be able to answer everybody's questions while we're live, but I will answer your questions if I don't answer it while we're live. So if you have a question, please jump in there and let me know. Um, Anna says, very useful information. Thanks, Anna. I'm glad, I'm glad you liked it. Uh, Jill, hi Bonnie. Such great information. Good. I'm glad, I'm glad you're getting some, some tips out of this. Um, Teresa, register marks for, oh, Teresa, it went away from me. <coughs> okay, I'm getting a lot of great information. Oh, well, good, I'm glad you guys are, are enjoying this. I, I had a lot of fun putting this together. I thought, okay, how many different ways can we use templates? Because it's not a one-size-fits-all kind of thing. Uh, everybody has a different project that they want to make or create and that requires different techniques in using our paper templates. Um, Debbie, thanks for sharing. You're welcome. I'm glad you liked it. 
Suzanne says she can't wait to watch it. We will have the replay, so don't worry about that. We will have that. Um, well, I'm not seeing any questions. I thought for sure there would be some questions, but if you do have some questions, please don't hesitate to uh, ask me, and I will answer it as best I can. Okay, so... On to the next thing. The next thing is we have a Customer Tuesdays tip. Um, Monica said, any tips on storing tip templates for future reuse? I would probably just put, um, I don't normally store them for future reuse because paper um, is just really easy to replace. But I have stored this one, and what I would probably do is I would just maybe fold it in half, and then I would put it in um, a file folder and fold it away in my filing cabinet. That would probably be the easiest way. You could also put them in a manila folder and store them that way if you wanted to as well. Um, this one was a little wrinkled before I got started this morning, and I just ironed the top of it. It's freezer paper, so you don't want to iron the back and get that wax on your iron. But I was able to iron the top and kind of straighten it out. So just like your tissue papers, uh, tissue pattern papers, we can iron those out nice and flat. You can re-iron the paper patterns as well. You might want to put a protective piece of paper between your iron and the... Uh, printed template itself because you don't want any of that ink from the printer to get on your iron just just as a caution there uh okay i think we could go on to our customer tip i thought this was really clever this came from and i hope i pronounced this correctly heather shimke i hope i'm saying that right but anyway, she wrote in and she said she was watching a video of mine from May of 2017 about thread charts. And I found that I had to borrow a thread chart from a dealer and I photocopied them, but I used photo paper and they came out nearly the same as the chart. I thought I would let you know that so that you can share this with others who could not afford the extra money but know someone that will lend them a, an actual thread chart to be copied. And I thought that was really clever. I didn't use photo paper because I had a, a, a real thread chart, but I just had to try it and see what happened. And here's my Floriani, the real deal, I'll call it. Here's my Floriani thread uh, chart. That's the real deal, it's the real thread. and. Really, you can't replace real thread to see the vivid colors, but I first printed this with the standard resolution, and that wasn't too bad, I didn't think. Um, it, oh, if I get it right side up, it looks a little, no, that was right side up, okay. <laughs> it didn't look too bad, I thought, but then I went ahead and did a higher resolution. This is still just regular paper. I didn't spend the extra for the photocopy paper but I could see where that would really uh, bring out the colors better um, but it's not too bad I thought that was really kind of clever and at least you can tell if it's a light pink or a bright red or something of that nature so that's a nice option if you want to uh, have a thread chart but you don't want to go out and spend the extra money maybe a friend or your dealer will loan you the uh, real deal so that you can photocopy it. So I thought that was very clever, Heather. And since you sent in your tip, I'm going to send you as a thank you five sheets of the 6x10 Glitter Flex. It's a super sparkly Glitter Flex that we carry. And we have over 60 colors of it. You can kind of see it. It's There's a little glare there so you're not seeing the actual sparkle. Here's without the, without the um, clear carrier on it but I'll be sending that to her for sending in her tip. And if you have a favorite tip that you use that you find very useful, please share it with us and let me know. Send it to Bonnie at SoInspiredByBonnie.com. If I use your tip on our Facebook Live, I will send you some Glitter Flex as well. Um, so we've gotten our customer tip out of the way and I just wanted to say thank you again for spending a little bit of your day with us 
and sharing your ideas with me. I learn from you guys just as much sometimes as you learn from me. I, I really feel that sewists share their love of sewing with, with each other very freely. We're, we're not, um, I don't know, I just, I just think that it's really neat that we are so willing to share with each other and encourage each other and go out there and try new things. So I, I just wanted to say thanks for doing that and coming on in. So until next Tuesday, bye-bye for now.